the case we're going to be reading now, Chapter 7, Incident at the Window. It chanced on Sunday, when Mr Utterson was on his usual walk with Mr Enfield, that their way lay once again through the by-street, and that when they came in front of the door, both stopped to gaze on it. Well, said Enfield, that story is at an end at least. We shall never see more of Mr Hyde. I hope not, said Utterson. Did I ever tell you I once saw him and shared your feeling of repulsion? It was impossible to do one without the other, returned Enfield, and by the way, what an ass you must have thought of me not to know that this was a back way to Dr Jekyll's. It was partly your own fault that I found out, even when I did. So you found out, did you? said Utterson. But if that be so, we may step into the court and take a look out the windows. To tell you the truth, I am uneasy about poor Jekyll, and even outside... I feel as if the presence of a friend might do him good. The court was very cool and a little damp, and full of premature twilight, although the sky, high up overhead, was still bright with sunset. The middle one of the three windows was halfway open, and sitting close beside it, taking the air with an infinite sadness of mien, like some disconsolate prisoner, Utterson saw Dr Jekyll. "'What, Jekyll?' he cried. "'I trust you are better.' I am very low, Utterson, replied the doctor drearily. Very low. It will not last long, thank God. You stay too much indoors, said the lawyer. You should be out, whipping up the circulation, like Mr Enfield and me. This is my cousin, Mr Enfield, Dr Jekyll. Come now, get your hat and take a quick turn with us. You are very good, sighed the other. I should like to very much, but no, no, no. It is quite impossible. I dare not. But indeed, Utterson, I am very glad to see you. This really it is really a great pleasure. I would ask you and Mr Enfield up, but the place is really not fit. Why then, said the lawyer good-naturedly, the best thing we can do is to stay down here and speak with you from where we are. That is just what I was about to venture to propose, returned the doctor with a smile. But the words were hardly uttered before the smile was struck off out of his face and succeeded by an expression of such abject terror and despair as froze the very blood of the two gentlemen below. They saw it but for a glimpse, for the window was instantly thrust down, but that glimpse had been sufficient, and they turned and left the court without a word. In silence, too, they traversed the by-street, and it was not until they had come into a neighbouring thoroughfare, where even upon a Sunday there were still some strength stirrings of life, but Mr Utterson at last turned and looked at his companion. They were both pale, and there was an unanswering there was an answering horror in their eyes. God forgive us. God forgive us, said Mr Utterson. But Mr Enfield only nodded his head very seriously, and work walked on once more in silence. So there we have it. They have seen something. They saw something happen and yet the writer is holding on to that information so that the reader is left feeling, you know, really excited to know exactly what is going on here. We know Dr Jekyll is in serious trouble, but we do not understand exactly what's going on.